God is good. And we're not on. Okay. God is good. Hey, we had a wonderful Easter weekend. And um, wonderful things are happening around here. <laughs> um, we had so many wonderful people on campus. It was so fun. We had over 5,000 on Saturday. And um, we had just a ton the whole weekend. But the best thing that happened this weekend is that Jesus showed up. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was a wonderful time. So I hope you all have rested up and you're having a great week this week because, you know, to what we're talking about today is strengthening ourselves for the future, strengthening, our, strengthening ourselves in God and getting ready for what's ahead. And that is an important thing to do always. And it was interesting because I was uh, seeking God about what to share today. And I felt like God just really said uh, that we should encourage everybody to strengthen their faith for what's ahead. That was the line I got from the Lord. And um, to me, that's an encouraging thing because I've been walking with God for a really long time. And um, you can get in ruts and you can, um, just in life in general, I think you all know that. And um, we, God calls us to come out of ruts <laughs> and get back up on the highway. And the only way to know if uh, you're in a rut or not <laughs> is by checking yourself out. Because sometimes we don't pay attention to our patterns. And um, you fall into patterns, and maybe they're not the best patterns to build your faith and to keep you strong in God. But you're so used to yourself <laughs> that that you don't notice that you're in some patterns that maybe aren't the best patterns for you, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they actually say that the first hour you wake up, you're just kind of on autopilot, and whatever you do, your body just kind of like, you just instinctively do, unless you become conscious of what you're actually doing. Like, you... You, ha you can change your habits, but you just kind of run on autopilot unless you become aware of it. Yes. And, like, that's just, like, human nature. Right. And so I think that we have to do what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 13, 5. It tells us, let's turn to that. Uh, Paul is exhorting the church to... It's 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Uh, Paul is exhorting the church to test themselves. So that's all of us. We test ourselves to see if we're in the faith. And uh, so I was thinking this morning when I, oh, it was about, I don't know, 6 in the morning. And I was just seeking God. And, um, and I was thinking about myself. And, okay, am I on point with everything. And, you know, a lot of exhaustion comes for after a big event like Easter weekend and all moms go through this. Fathers too, I'm sure. But, and, and volunteers in the church and there's so many new things going yeah. on in that week. Maybe like meal preparation, people coming in from out of town. So home preparation and all, um, if you're working in retail, a lot of extra time put in because of what's happening in the stores. And, and that could be in other businesses as well. So sometimes there's a lot of extra um, strengthening waned during that time. Yes. Yeah. And so we have to return the strength that we've used, you know. So... You have to fortify yourself just to come to the level that you were before physically. Like I talked to somebody uh, by text this morning, and 
they just got so wiped out. They're in bed this week ha yeah. dealing with some symptoms. And I know who it is. And they're a super hard worker. And they've overdone, I'm sure, through this whole time. I, they had a house full of people, probably, I don't know, four, 30 or 40 people mm. over the weekend. And so these are the kind of things I'm talking about, like just normal life. Wiping you out. Wiping you out. Yeah. Yeah. And so motherhood could do that without any extra holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Which I know these two can attest to. Yeah. And, uh, but, um, so in general, what I'm talking about is check on yourself. See how you're doing. See if you need extra physical time to recover. See if you need emotional time to yeah. recover. I know that there's sometimes where I'm just having a hard day. And then I realize, you know what? I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. And that's why I feel all right. these feelings. And right. then it makes you feel like, you know what? I'm just going to um, not put so much pressure on myself and, and try to get all these things all worked out. It's like, oh, I just need to rest. There's so many times in the Bible it says like, Eat something and rest. <laughs> well, yeah, Elijah was a good example of that yeah. when he was worn out and God just gave him natural instruction, you know. He didn't say, uh, go to the scrolls at that point. He was saying, lay your body down, eat some food, mm -hmm. and take care of yourself. And then you get up and you start afresh. Because, you know, we are made from dust and we are human beings and at times, you just have to remind yourself that um, you have to just take care of your body. So yeah. even emotionally, like I think about this when we were young, my husband, he had about two days, I guess, that was full of counseling all day long. And I was at home at that point with uh, two little ones. And he would come home just not wanting to talk at all. <laughs> and of course, I had been with little babies all day long, and all I wanted to do was talk. <laughs> and it was a conflict. And until you begin to test yourself and see where you are, and when I realized that we, I was needing fellowship, and he was needing not to say a word because all he did was talk all day long <laughs> and listen to someone else. And so he didn't want to come home to a young wife who just wanted to talk constantly. And so we finally understood what was going on and we adjusted the situation to where those nights I put my focus elsewhere and I just let him emotionally and mentally rest. You know, he wasn't like that every day. Now, if you're married to a psychiatrist and all they do is listen to the woes of others for five days a week, you're probably going to have to figure out other times that you can fellowship <laughs> instead of that night, you know, that he's doing that. But uh, those kind of things, if you're in jobs like that, you have to check yourself out to see what's really going on here, you know? Right. Yeah. And um, plus... If you're dealing with physical illness or physical attacks, you you just you just have to be smart about things and and get yourself strengthened where you need strength. So basically, today we're talking about strengthening yourself in the faith. So here's that scripture. Who wants to read that? Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourself. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? Well, meaning fail the test, meaning have you asked Jesus to come and live in you? And if you have, he's in you. And yeah, that makes all the difference in the world as far as our strength goes. Right, Megan? Mm-hmm. And um, when, have there been times that you've had to just lean on Jesus to get through a situation. I'm sure you have. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, I noticed that maybe it's not, like, necessarily sometimes of, like, my own life, but you kind of throughout life or throughout, like, even the day pick up things that other people say. Maybe you start to carry oh, yeah. on the weight of other people's That's worries. True. 
I've and it starts to, to affect you. Like maybe it's not something you're worried about, but you, you know, we we feel for people, and so you yeah. you pick up these little things, and things are said, and then finally you get to a point where you're like so upset and so down, and you don't even know why, and it's because mm-hmm. you know. But that verse it says, um, can you go back to it? Can you pull it up? First Corinthians, yeah. Second Corinthians. Um, Second Corinthians. Then about yourselves that Jesus is in you. Look, if you're conscious that Jesus is in you and you t- make that the focus, that he is in you, so none of this other, everything else becomes trivial. And so I think you just have to be really conscious of him always being in you yes. because there is no um, upset in him. Yeah. There is no depression in him. Yeah. There is no sickness in him. Yeah. There is no poverty in him. And if he is in you, then you don't have that either. So you don't need to pick it up like walking through a grass and picking up burrs. You don't have to pick up all the things of life. You need to stay focused that Jesus is in you. It's him, right? Absolutely. And that's uh, those (laughs) truths. And you've been writing down some of those truths, Megan. So maybe yeah. you want to read a little bit about that. Um, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got to find it. Wait. Yes. But. Well, something that just, our phones are a blessing and a curse. Yeah. But a blessing about it is that if you do wake up in the middle of the night, like I have been, um, either I've been waking up or Evangeline's been waking me up. So we're on the same schedule. <laughs> uh, that. You can turn on healing scriptures, I like on YouTube, and then put in healing scriptures. I do by Kenneth Hagin, but you can do whatever you find, and then it, it feeds your faith as you're yeah. kind of like in that awake state where if you're in that awake state, sometimes, it, well, it's good to pray, and then if your mind is starting to like just wander and you're starting to worry, put on scriptures, and that'll help. That'll help. Right. Well, um, Colossians one twenty seven is the reference for Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if we live more aware of his presence in us and around us, it just makes all the difference in the world because the world is kind of crazy where it's at. But, you know, honestly, in the Roman days and and in the early Christian days, the world was crazy then too. And even in the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, the world was crazy then too. (laughs) So the thing is, the world, because a lot of people in the world, they don't know Jesus. He is not their hope. He is not inside of them. So whenever you're with them, you're not sensing God's presence in their lives. So a lot of times you're sensing what they're sensing in life. Yeah, And it could be a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry. And it's kind of what Megan had just said, that you can begin to pick up what's, if you're working in the world and you're with them every day, you can begin to pick up their anxiety yeah, and um, their worry and their hurts. And I have an example. I, I was listening to Kenneth Hagin when he was on the, um, he was really, really sick at the time, like paralyzed at mm-hmm. that point. And he said that people would come in that weren't, you know, saved and unsaved. But even the unsaved ones, they would put their hand on his hand and he could uh, feel their spirit. Yeah. And so, and it wasn't that, you know, it's like it was because we were spirit, soul, and body. And so he, them putting their hand on him, he could feel that even though he was, he was stuck to the bed. Yeah. So it just really does show like the people around you really, really do affect you. Yeah, they do. The moms really affect the kids. Yeah. Big time. That's true. And like with him, he was like so young, 15, 16, 17, dealing with a deathly illness. And um, when people would come and visit him, even preachers, many of them would just be preparing them to die. Mm-hmm. And he was really wanting to believe God to live. Mm-hmm. and But he wasn't getting any encouragement like that. So... He had to get that encouragement on his own. Basically taught himself. He could barely move, and he he would turn the pages of the Bible, and that was even hard for him. But he would take the Bible and read it. They would 
put it in a place that he could prop it up and read it. And um, he got a revelation on one scripture, and it was Mark 11, 24. And that became a life bridge for him, um, a, a bridge to walk a, across from death to life. And he grabbed hold of that scripture, and he said, well, um, if I can speak to this mountain and command it to be plucked up and cast into the sea, and if I pray and ask and do not doubt in my heart, but believe for which I pray, it will come to pass, then I, I'm i going to take action on the scripture. And um, that's how he got the healing from the uh, out of the spirit realm into the natural realm. He believed it himself. And, um, you know, there is a reference of a Roman soldier believing Jesus for his servant to be healed. And he so believed what Jesus said when he prayed for his servant to be mm -hmm. healed. He said, speak the word only. And Jesus said, wow, I've never seen such faith in all of my life. Speak the word only. Jesus was impressed with that. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you love to do something that would impress yeah. Jesus? Yeah. And uh, he, <laughs> that guy was not even a Jewish follower. And at the point, everyone who was a believer at that time were Jewish. Jesus, all the disciples, they were Jewish. Which might have worked to his advantage in the sense that, like, he wasn't religious. Yeah. He wasn't, he didn't need to qualify himself or anything. He just knew Jesus. Right. And sometimes I think we have to just, like, let everything go that our minds try to be like, we need to do this right. We need to right. do that right to, in order to get stuff. You yeah. know, that's really religion. Yeah. Is qualifying yourself. Uh -huh. Jesus Jesus did it, and really all we need to focus is on is him, like that right. guy. Right. Like, he didn't have any training in the law. No. Which may have worked to his advantage. Yeah, because he just believed in Jesus, and he believed yeah. in what Jesus said. He didn't have any training. It was just like, okay, this guy is healing. I believe him. Yes, and, and Jesus loved that. Right. And so... You know, that's the thing. We're, we're talking about strengthening ourselves in, in our faith. And the way we do that is believe what Jesus says. So how can you know what Jesus says if you don't read the Bible? Right. So part of the way, of course, that we know to strengthen ourselves is to be in the Bible. It's a really important thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, can't you tell a difference when you're not quite as much in the Bible as when you are, are in the Bible more mm -hmm. more times? Oh, yeah. It's a constant thing. And it, I feel like... We have to fight for it, don't we? Everything in life. Like, look, we're in the end times. It's like the devil is the god of this world. Let's just bottom line it. Yeah. Everything <laughs> in this world is screaming against what the Bible says. That's exactly and right. And it's like you can, if you are not in it, you can just drift a little bit like it's just not that big a deal. Uh -huh. And your yeah. just thoughts just kind of drift a little bit. Right. And then suddenly you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe any of this. What's going on here? Yes. And then you have to run back to what yeah. this Bible says about you. And it should be, you know, this should be the bottom line for your life. Right. It is the bottom line for our lives. <laughs> right. And it, it's the lifeline. It's actually everything that, that, well, like, you know, Jesus is the word made flesh and Jesus is in us. So in that sense, we have the power of God in us to pull us out of any ditch we get ourselves in. I guess that's sort of what I'm talking yeah. about today because we're living in the end times. And in the end times, the Bible talks about how rough it's going to be. And I have to say, it is. It's a rough day in the sense that people just are not very kind in the world these days. They're not. So get over it. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. They're just not. Like, I know. <laughs> like, we can't expect the world to live like Christians. 
And I'll hear Christians say sometimes how shocked they are by certain people and the things they say and the things they do. But in reality, if they're not saved, why, why are you shocked? Why are you shocked? Yeah. <laughs> they, when they don't know the Lord, you know, so. But that's why we need to strengthen ourselves because um, Jesus, he, he's the word made flesh. And, and he humbled himself and he came and he dwelt among us. And he, he died on the cross and rose from the dead. And by him rising from the dead, I mean, we had that wonderful celebration this weekend about the resurrection and the resurrection power of Jesus. Well, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And like Megan was talking about, living aware of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Living aware of that every day. Reminding ourselves of that every day. That's part of how we strengthen ourselves is by saying, Jesus is in me. I can do all things through Jesus who strengthens me. You are the one that is strengthening me right now, Lord. Mm -hmm. You have answers for this problem. I may not in the natural have those answers at this point, but because I'm praying and I'm asking you, you are going to give me the solutions for these problems. And, and that is how you approach your day every day. Instead of just randomly trying to figure out what to do that day, ask Jesus what to do that day. Go to him first thing in the morning. Yeah, like Steve has been um, consistently working out every day. Um, well, he works out five to six times a week for the past three years. Yeah. And, um, I mean, if you see him, he you can tell that he does that. Yeah. And the consistency of spending time with God is what really builds the muscle. And Steve also, he talked about, like, when you don't want to go to the gym are the days that you really uh, are improving. <laughs> That's he said, interesting. He said those are the days when you're really making a big difference. Wow. And so. Now think of that spiritually. Yeah. And and like I, you know, during Easter, you know, we saw a lot of people we haven't seen for a while, new people, people who, um, uh, you know, only come around during Easter and Christmas. And well, it's also like. Also new people coming to experience the church. That yeah, was that very cool. And it's so wonderful. And I just want so much for all the people to consistently come to church because. Psalm ninety two thirteen. Pl those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. And um, when we go to church, we're not just doing God a favor by showing up. Mm -hmm. We are going um, to honor God, to uh, remind ourselves of who we are, to be around people who believe the same as us, which strengthens you. And um, as you c continually do that, that's where you see huge improvement and impact in your life and in your family's life. Mm -hmm. And it, we know you can't make every single service, but try to, to just be more consistent because your life is going to flourish more and more as you uh, make church a priority, spending time with God yeah. a priority. And we really can't do it alone. That's what Megan was saying. It's like all of a sudden you drift and you're like, where where am I? What am I doing? Yeah. When you think, hey, I love God. I, um, you know, when I die, I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like, well, yes, but your life on earth can be so much uh, just more. Uh, it could be full of fruit and uh, blessings. And as we come together and come to church, it, yeah. it just changes us. It, it helps us to not get It off. is really, there is something very special about the corporate anointing, being present. In, in a corporate anointing. And, you know, the Lord himself, like um, uh, Bill Shear, uh, a pastor in Tulsa who we love very much. He is so funny. He, he says, all of these people talk about the church at large. He said, I believe God assigns the local church and that it's the body of Christ at large, but it's not the church at large. The church is only the local church. And God assigns pastors in local churches and assigns people into those churches and he says so many Christians will say oh yeah I belong to the church and but they don't go to a church but he said I don't believe that's even the way God intended it I believe it's the body of Christ at large but only the local church and that they are really important because when you attend a church and you're a part of a church first of all you're in a, a, a corporate anointing 
that is only present in a local church. And it is pretty wonderful and exciting. I love yeah. it. And being with God's people weekly makes all the difference in your life. And it really does. But hearing him talk about that, it was like, I agree with him. Yeah. It was like, yeah, the Lord of Signs works for local uh, churches. And the people that attend those churches, that call is on all of them. You see that anointing, you see that call get on all of them. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a reality. And so it does help us to attend a local church. It does something for us just to be present where the word is preached. And it's amazing because being in worship, just being there, you know, uh, God inhabits the praise of his people and you just sense God's mm -hmm. presence Yeah, and it gets on you. And it's like, wow, that is wonderful. Just being in this presence. Well, I, I remember like you know? after I had Evangeline, I didn't come to church for like maybe six weeks or something as I was recovering. So I watched live stream and I was at home and I was loving it. I thought it was great. Yeah. But then when I came here, I was like, oh my God. Goodness, this is so much better to be in you forget here. when you're not in it. You yeah, do. and it's so I, I like just cried when I walked in the building just because of the presence of God being in here. So there really yeah. is something. It's, yeah. it's really good. And it, it helps everybody when you show up because right. it's like, man, they're consistent. I can be consistent. And, and it, you it changes have something people's lives. to give people yeah. when you come. You do. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I think a lot of people leave because they come wanting something to be given given to them yeah and like they put all their focus on that but really all of us are there for a reason because yeah. there's something in you that That's, others need boy that is the truth and like you don't really know but like you're you're called to minister just as much as some you know everyone else That's the people true. who have been there That's right there's a reason you're there yeah so yeah. while you're taking in you also are giving out. Yeah. You don't know who you're sitting next to. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's interesting? Just your presence sometimes when people see that you're there. Yeah. It does something to it them does. and ministers to their hearts and minds. You don't even understand that, but it's a real thing because you have Jesus in you. You're carrying something special all around you for yeah. others. And yeah. it's really, really true. And I think about like the different ones that I know that carry such a joy level like raise up i always think about him just by seeing him and his smiling face and and uh it's like he's just it's like yeah it's like yeah <laughs> gives you this that's great yeah the joy of the lord is our strength ray you know right. what i mean so it's you're right about that and you know as people serve and give and pour into the church and uh you know i think about the people that put the christmas lights up and the people that take the christmas lights down yeah. and the people that serve during the easter egg hunt for the kids you know and the various ones they're all pouring something into families and into people a yeah. ton of a it was ton. fun i was watching them um, lay out the eggs and they were all dancing and having fun as they're yeah. putting the eggs out yeah. and i just like this is such a great yeah atmosphere and People were just having such great attitudes, and it we was just had, really cool. And I realized this year we're going to have to double our egg amounts next year. Because <laughs> there was were crazy. so many here. <laughs> but it was a wonderful, wonderful that day. Was, and that was, it was a, so yeah. good. But, you know, the thing is, is, so we're talking sort of through this a little bit, but strengthen your faith for what is ahead. That's what we're talking about. And the Lord gave me three things today where... It says in 1 Corinthians 13, 5, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Well, the way you test yourself is by listening to what comes out of your mouth. You can tell exactly where you're at. I can, yeah. I can tell where I'm at and what I need to, to tighten up or strengthen or mm -hmm. fortify or change by what's coming out of my mouth. And um, like A, God gave me three things, A, B, and C. Are you constantly complaining? So if I notice that I'm complaining all the time, it, and you can be doing it and not even know you're doing it. That's what's really I've crazy. I've done it so much. And it only really puts you in a bad mood. It like, really does. And it does. And like almost in a, in a, a place where you can't receive help because yeah. you can only see 
still wrong. Yeah, yeah it's really true. <laughs> but like if you are constantly complaining, then what you need to do is take time and pray about those things you're complaining about. So it could be super simple. It could be anything. But if it's something that would cause you to complain, then you should specifically pray about that issue. So uh, if it's something bugging you, like your lawn looks horrible. I just pulled that out of the air. I don't really even care about yeah, those front things. But front yard could use if your hair is, if your if your lawn, <laughs> your, hair. <laughs> your hair is bugging you, pray about it. I get it. <laughs> if your lawn is bugging you, spend time praying about it. If you're complaining God about it, God will show you what to do. Pray about it, and when what's bugging you? I said lawn. The front My lawn. lawn has been bugging me, <laughs> and. No, I. <laughs> That's funny. While I'm here, there's someone assessing my lawn because it bugged me, and I was wow. like, "Why wouldn't I call someone?" Yes, exactly. Smart. We'll figure it out. We're gonna, we're gonna plant some. <laughs> it bugged me. <laughs> and if something's bothering you, if you pray about it, thank you. I need that. That was bugging me. Thank you. Then it'll help you to not. You know, be yeah. so upset about it. Yeah. If you pray about it, not only will you not be so upset about it you'll get a direction about what to do. Yeah. Like Megan called somebody. And as soon as you start acknowledging that I'm complaining about this, like what she did is she took action. And it changed. It will change in the next couple, it will change. next month probably. Yeah. So, awesome. so we can complain about something for four years. Mm -hmm. Or we can take action on it if we know what to do. If we don't know what to do, we pray about it, and God will show us what to do, and then we take action. A lot of times, the thinking about it is so much worse and more difficult it's than true. just actually doing it. Yes, <laughs> it's really, really true. Or, you know, if there's an area, like you were saying, an area in the house that's bothering you, yeah. you can think about it and think about it and think about it, and then you're like, okay, I'm just going to actually tackle this. Right. And then it ends up being done, like, in 15 minutes when you've spent that's days really and true. days and days upset about it. That's really true. And, and like we did have a natural list, and one of the things on that natural list is about um, breaking down jobs into smaller roles because some people get majorly overwhelmed with something. Mm -hmm. And um, if, they, if you break it down into smaller jobs, you can get it done. Like someone's moved recently, and I told them, go through three boxes a day. Because you, if you don't have time to spend a week and a half unloading boxes, you might get some unloaded, then you have to go back to work. And so tackle it in a small way by like doing two, three boxes a, a night. And it's amazing how, if you think about that, in, in a week, you will have gone through 21 boxes. Wow. And when, instead of thinking, I've got to go through 21 boxes, you do three boxes a day. It makes mm -hmm. all the difference, you know. Yeah. And it's, but we don't always think that way. Mm -hmm. You know, we think uh, more along the lines of, oh, look at this. We've got to unpack this entire house, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of rethinking I'm thinking of that because we're getting close to moving in. Yep, I know. So you just break it down. exciting. <laughs> I know. So, so number two, if, you, if you're listening to what you're saying out of your mouth, and you realize you're talking fear all the time, like worry is fear. So if you're worrying, if you're in anxiety about something, what are you in anxiety about? About the future? Mm -hmm. About failing in the future? About a new job? A new course of action? What are you in fear about? Are you in fear of physical harm? Whatever you have coming out of your mouth that you're in fear about all the time, you recognize it. You think about what's coming out of your mouth. And then you tackle that fear with the word. Like you have to feed that area faith. You have to, and you only get faith. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. and, and so you know that faith will come eventually. It's going to come if you feed on the word. So I personally, and what I've done is I'll take an area that I think I'm weak in faith in an area because you can be so strong in faith in this area and you can be so strong in faith in this area your whole life. Yeah. 
and so weak in faith in this area your whole life. So what you need to do is recognize the area that you're in fear in and then tackle that particular area with scriptures. So you start looking up. Let's say your fear, your, your, you have a fear of not having enough finance. Then start meditating every day. I would take three scriptures and I would read them out loud to myself every day in that area or, or do three scriptures this day in that area, three scriptures the next day in, in that area. So like, oh, Philippians 419, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So, so you're troubled about finances, then say no devil, my God will supply all my needs. So you feeling worried about it. No, I'm not worrying. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches, not according to my riches, according to his riches. So you get several scriptures. What is a finance scripture you like a lot, Addison? Well, I like, I like the, uh, these ones that are all broken down. I was just reading a lot of them, but um, like Psalm 37, 23, I immediately respond in faith to the guidance of the Holy Spirit within me. I am always in the right place at the right time because my steps are ordered of the Lord, which is really good because it's showing that you're in the right place, spending the right money, you doing know, like right you're thing. doing the right thing That's with your finances. That's scripture for kids too. And just all these, like God the right delights place. in my prosperity. He gives me power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant upon the earth. Um, God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness, and I am well able to possess so that, all that God has provided for me. So that helps you battle fear mm -hmm. in that particular area. Do you have one that comes to you um, that you meditate on a lot or that you think about when you're dealing in those? Is there a favorite one of yours? I like all the Deuteronomy know. ones too about like yeah. blessed, like oh, yeah. blessed Deuteronomy going in, blessed going out. Yeah, all the blessings that was that read at our wedding. That is a really and, good one. And it's just, uh, but uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight two. God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. My financial income now increases as the blessing of the Lord overtake me. Well, like um, the in Deuteronomy twenty eight, it says that uh, I am the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. So if yeah. you start feeling yeah. like, yeah, if you start feeling like you're a failure, you know, yeah. that's a good one. Because it's like, oh, no, I am not a failure yeah. because uh, it says I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I mean, I like that one for things, yeah. Yeah, feelings too. like that. You know? I think of all the stories like Joseph being one of them. Yeah. And he prospered in everything he did because yes. God was with him. Yes. So when yeah, I go into a place, a I think one. to myself, God's with me. Yeah. 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 He's so with me. Good. Yes. Guess what? Today I'm going to prosper because God's with me. Amen. And yeah. he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I love that yes. one too. And so these are the kind, this is how we battle fear of, yeah. of in that particular area or any area. Do you have another one? You well, yeah. Say? Well, it, this condensed uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 4. I am blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am blessed in the basket and blessed in the store. My bank accounts, investments, health, and relationships flourish. The blessings of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. Yeah, and you know the thing uh, about that one. I pray that one for people that are traveling too. Yeah. I like that and, as a traveling. I mean, blessed go in the city, blessed yeah. in the country. Blessed going in and blessed going out. And like, it's always good to pray for your re-entry when you get back from a yes, trip. Because that can be a spot where you, really you're like vulnerable and you get hit and like upset right. easily. I don't know. Yeah, it's just it's a really place true. it's good to pray for when you come back home. That's exactly right. So do you want to just take up the offering since <laughs> sure. we're talking about finances? And yes. then we'll finish out. Um, yes. Well, we are in faith with you for your finances. And finances are important. Um they're important to God. They're, they are the what we need in this life to kind of do things. And so, therefore, it's not something that we shy away from. It's not something that we are embarrassed to talk about. It's not something that we should never bring up. It's actually something very important to to um, get in, in faith about. 
and to believe God that um, there will be financial breakthrough over your household and that um, just things, yeah, in Malachi 3, 10, it talks about how, um, oh, actually, do you mind just putting it up? Because why, why try to say it when we can just read it? <laughs> Malachi 3, 10. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, there it is. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows, keep going, then I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field cast its grapes, says the Lord of hosts, which means you'll be in God's timing. All the nations will, will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been, okay, yeah. So, that is saying a lot right there. And, and um, God doesn't just want us to be blessed for our own household, but for people to see how good God is. is. And then their faith will get boost, a, a big boost because they see, look how good God has been to them. Mm -hmm. If God can be good to them, he can be good to me. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be. Sometimes people are jealous and they don't realize that God loves everyone the same. And yeah. Well, that is how you conquer jealousy, is that when you see somebody else that's blessed, Instead of letting feelings of resentment rise up in you that why are they blessed and I'm not blessed, first of all, you're in unbelief by thinking that way because, like Megan said, she knows that God is with her so that so she's going to prosper wherever she goes or whatever she does. Uh -huh. So that conquers jealousy toward anybody. So if you are dealing with any of that, you have to talk. It really to your, does. It does. It totally conquers jealousy because you know that that God is your God. They're blessed, so you're going to be blessed. This you happens all the time in retail because, like, when you work on a commission basis yeah. and then someone has, like, a huge sale mm -hmm. and there's fighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even my bosses have talked to me about this, like, you're such a team player. I'm not even tooting my own horn about this. You're such a team player, like, and I said, because you know what? God always makes it up to me. Yeah. Whatever gets stolen from me, yeah. he makes it up to me. Yeah. Whatever happens, it's all good because he takes care of me. It's yeah. not really me good going enough. about yeah. myself trying to make this all work. Mm -hmm. And and those feelings of like anxiety, mm -hmm. like you said, jealousy, mm -hmm. is when you don't believe that God is with you yeah. and that you don't believe that God can take care of you. Yes. Yeah. And that's when all that stuff seeps in. Mm -hmm. I know. Right? Yeah. And I've been hearing things people say, oh, <coughs> these young ones can never buy a house with it like this. That isn't true. God makes a way where there is no way. Yeah. And it's I, so off. Yeah. Yeah. And when other people get great houses, you just know, okay, I'm I next. Too. God's yeah. going to bless us some way. I don't know how, but he will do it. Yeah. And like, you know, when we got our first house, we didn't even have a down payment. And God got us a down payment. I mean, it was a miraculous. And God always sees you through. So, you know, there's a timing sometimes, and you just keep standing, you just keep trusting, you just keep believing, and God will do it. I mean, we've had so many miracle testimonies on young ones getting houses. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me. I, I do pray about that. I'm trusting the Lord always over young ones being able to get houses. Well, anybody, but young marrieds, I'm always believing God yeah. they're going to be able to get a house. And I believe in next steps up. You live in a place for a while because that's the best thing for you to do at that point. And you grow, you develop, and then a day comes, it's time for you to step up and you know it. And you don't have to get off out into a place that's going to be harmful for you. You have a confidence and a peace and you know it. And you know what is the right place. You have a witness on that. And when that happens, things come together you get in that place, and it's not, it may be a little bit of a stretch for you at that time, but it ends up not being a stretch anymore. You get to where you've grown into that place, and you can handle it at that time. It's amazing how it works in God. Yeah. So, so you I, never have to be jealous yeah. of anybody, and they don't ever have to be jealous of you. Yeah. And I yeah. love that what you said, that because you have gotten stolen from. Yeah. And God has made it up to you. It just happened to me recently at work. And I thought, well, that's really annoying. But yeah. 
And I had a talk with my boss, and she's a Christian, and I was like, it's all good because you know what? We're just not even going to fight this. We're not even going to say anything about it. We're just going to be at peace with this, and God's got me. It's all yes. good. Uh-huh. Yeah. It is all good, and he does make it up to you. Yeah, it's a, it doesn't yes. matter. And and so it changes our whole way of thinking, and that's really what we're talking about today. This is how you get strengthened in faith for what's ahead. You don't have to be fearful of anything that happens because you will know that God's got you. And yeah. that's the thing, that Jesus is you is in you, and Christ in you is the hope of glory. Yeah, so um, let's pray for everybody as they are going to give and uh, text in to give, whatever you're going to do. But we just thank you, God, that uh, we delight ourselves in the Lord, and he gives us the desires of our heart. We thank you, Lord, that the Lord has opened us unto us his good treasure and blessed the work of our hands and his he commands the blessing upon us yes. in our storehouse and all that we undertake. Mm-hmm. And we thank you, God, that we are delivered from the power of and authority of darkness. And we cast down reasonings and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. And we, and we bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of God's word. So if we are dealing with jealousy and anger and um, all the things, God, we thank you that um, we just trust in you, God, and that every good and perfect gift is from you. And we focus on thing on things above and not on things on this earth. And yes. we just trust you, Lord, for a huge yes. financial breakthrough. In Jesus', In Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 So if you're feeling unsure or you're feeling confused about things, sometimes you're confused about things because you haven't been dealing with things as they come along. Like Megan said, she's been frustrated about this lawn. So she called someone and she took care of it, you know, got someone to check it out. So like, but that's not a big deal. Uh, usually, anything you feel confused about usually is not a big deal. It's just a lot of times you feel that way because you're overwhelmed with a lot of things at one time. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, honestly, when you start spending time in prayer about things, like we were saying, that if, if you notice you're in fear about something, you you get in the word with it and... Uh, if you notice you're complaining a lot, then you realize I need to spend time in prayer about this. So when you start praying more about little trite things, I mean, they really are unimportant. And some people say, why would I bother God with that? Well, the reason you would bother God with that is to straighten out your own thinking. So if you're all concerned about something, you're all frustrated about something, you want to straighten out your own thinking. And so you start praying about something. And it's amazing how God will end up giving you steps to change situations. And it's amazing how if you'll just put the time in prayer, it's like you're praying out the floor plan for something to be built on. And that could be in any area of your life, but like it really makes a difference. And then God will give you steps to plan something for change. Yeah, so uh, is that... C, mm-hmm. did you say, um, yeah. just so people, the three things. Okay, the three things is, uh, are you, are you notice that you're constantly complaining, then you pray more on that situation. If you notice that you're in fear and you're talking fear, then you get in the word and you start taking hold of the scriptures in the particular area that you're in fear of. And I say that a lot because there are people that are super strong in faith in certain areas. I know some people, they lay hands on somebody, they're healed immediately. They have such faith for it. And then I'll see people, then maybe they they are constantly dealing with financial struggles. Well, they have a lot of faith in this area, but this area needs to be built up. Or maybe they struggle with people. And it's kind of like Megan, she deals with people all the time. So she's always meditating on favor scriptures. She's always working to forgive people. She's always working to know that God is for her. And so no matter how, if someone is mistreating her, she stays connected in the Lord and the Lord will work it all out for her. You know that, don't you? I do. And so, yeah, you want to say something about that? There's a lot of people that struggle there, they'll wake up in the morning upset with somebody. You know what I mean? (laughs) Because everything produces after its own kind. So, like, 
your feelings even, like even taking on those negative things just ends up producing more of that. It does. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. So like you at some point have to just put a stop to stuff and just follow the word. Absolutely. So that it produces, so to the word, so that it produces more of that in your life. That's Do you know right. what I mean? Oh, absolutely. That it brings victory. And it's a, a, it's a very powerful thing. This is something, too, that helps. Um, Tina shared a story with me um, this week that Scott had gone to a conference. And it was through his work, but it was a man that talked a lot about happiness and he had done a massive amount of study on what makes people happy. And he found out of everything he studied, he, he uh, interviewed tons of people and he did a lot of scientific study on this issue. And he discovered that the happiest people are the thankful people yes. and, and people that are grateful. And he said, train your children. He, he is in the area of uh, psychiatry of some form, but he, he was doing research on all of this. He said, train your children. If you can train your children before they're six years old to be every day, think of three things every day. Ask your children every day. Tell me three things that you're thankful for today. And he said they have to be different things every day. And if you can train your kids to think that way before they're six, they, it, it lessens the possibility of mental illness when they're older. And so as an adult, if you haven't learned that, you have to retrain your thinking to be grateful and to have a grateful heart. You know, the Bible tells us tons about being grateful. Like it says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And, and it, it's, it talks about um, praising God and talks about God turning our mourning into dancing. And like I noticed that Addison dances several times a week with the kids. I mean, they're one and we'll, uh, she'll, she'll be, be two, two tomorrow. tomorrow, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then they're five, barely five, just turned five three weeks ago. And they, every, uh, almost every Pretty night, every night. Yeah. um, Evangeline will say joy, joy, joy. And you, you can't really even hardly understand the word, but after you've heard it a lot, you know that's what she's saying. And she wants you to turn on the phone, joy, 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 down in my heart. And then she'll dance. Yeah. But like they dance every day to kid Christian songs. And she'll dance with them. And I, she'll come over and want you to hold your hands and dance with her. Yeah, and it's just being happy and joyful and Trent about too, life. They, I mean, they Trent, a lot do. of times, they are the ones that are getting me to dance with them a lot. All the time. They like, start it now because they've been doing it, yeah. you know, so much. Then it helps you go downstairs or, or go to bed uh -huh. happier. Happier. But <laughs> yeah. the thing is, it's all about having a grateful heart about life. So this man was saying that it lessens mental illness older in life if you learn to be grateful for three things every day. So I thought of, what could I be grateful first thing this morning? Well, for coffee. I'm really <laughs> grateful for coffee. <laughs> and um, yesterday I went somewhere and I thought I had a perfect parking space. And I was so grateful for that. And I just thought, God, thank you for this parking space. But the point I'm making is every day you can say, I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for my parents, whatever position you're in. I'm grateful for my job. You can say those same things. And you might want to throw those in periodically. But every day you have to think of three things that's new that you're grateful for. So, like, um, I'm trying to think, who was the... He, there, you guys are way too young for this. George Burns. Yeah, I don't he know. lived to be almost 100, 99, almost 100. And one thing he did every single day of his life is he, he did this every day, all day. He was grateful. He would say, oh, I'm so grateful for this cup of coffee. This is the best cup of coffee I've ever had. <laughs> every day he would say that. Whenever he got a parking space, he would always say, I'm so grateful for this parking space. This is the great, best parking space I've ever had. But 
he said that is what he said caused his longevity. Wow. Is he was so grateful. Well, I do believe it causes balanced mental health. I really do. And one way we can be grateful is by being in faith. And another way is what Megan was saying is living aware of Jesus in us all the time. And what 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 do you think about that, Addison? Wait, with being just the grateful spirit and the and the thankful spirit. Yeah, I mean you can really change the atmosphere of a room once you start becoming grateful. And at first sometimes if people are not in the mood, they're like, ugh. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> Because I, I understand I've been that person. but And then you're like, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. You feel that way sometimes. And then after a while, you're like, man, actually, we really are blessed. And I it know. really changes you. And it's like, I man, know. even like, on our worst day, we are far blessed compared. You know, we, we first of all, love Jesus and have him in our lives. And that's so that's amazing. Wonderful. And I heard someone say, all your most difficult days, you've made it through. Yeah. And so you're going to make it through anything else you face. And if you don't like your house, just be grateful you have one. Yeah. And, and be grateful. You know, yeah. I was really uh, blessed because my brother said to me the other day, he said, I am so grateful to have a roof over my head. Mm. And he said, I am so grateful that I have food all the time. And he was really being genuine. He said, I know people, I've seen people, yeah. and they don't have a roof over their head, and they don't have food. Yeah. And just the fact that we have that, I am so grateful for that. And I thought, he is living this out. And it's. Yeah. It, and I didn't tell yeah. him to. He's gotten it on his own. What had sparked this guy to do this book is that there was an inter or a survey, and it was like 80% of people who went to Harvard were unhappy and depressed. And they had these high degrees I mean, they, they, they seemed like they should, you know, feel great about themselves, all That's these things. Right. And I they were all down. And yeah. so this guy was like, man, I've got to figure out what the deal is with yeah. this. Because it was like they have no reason to be down. And they're yeah. down all the time. Yeah. And so he found out they were 80% is a lot. It's yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. And so this can change anybody's life if you have nothing or if you have a lot. Yeah. This will make you happy if you become grateful for three new things every day. And they, he said in training your children, you have to make sure they're not saying the same things. Like if they say, I'm grateful for my mommy, I'm grateful for my daddy. <laughs> well, they have to come up with something different. Like, I'm grateful for the car that we're, you're taking me to school in today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful for the dress I put on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Whatever it is, it has to be something new. I'm grateful for my socks. <laughs> but you train them to today. think that way. Yeah. And every morning we wake up and we say, God, thank you that I have a new day to be alive today. Yeah. I have one more day to live on this earth because someday we'll all be in heaven. And, and we think about how bad the earth is, but honestly, what a privilege. We get to live on this earth during this time, during the end times. What a privilege. <laughs> yeah. And we get to use our faith and we get to see God do supernatural things in this time. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, God is in the middle of a lot of supernatural things right now. Yeah. And it is pretty exciting and pretty wonderful. And we are finishing out. But um, I just want to say to you that all things are possible in God. And think about that today, about how all things are possible in God. It's a wonderful day. God bless you all. Thanks for tuning in. We love you.